Hello everyone, welcome to this demo on how to use some of the smart tools for selections in Photoshop. Um, I'm going to go over four, you know, tools slash techniques that you can utilize that are smart for Photoshop. Um, I'm going to open a couple images and walk you through it. So I'm going to start with this image right here. Um, let's say that you want to get rid of this hole. Let's say that you want this picture to have the bricks and not have the hole in them. Um, one of the tools that you could use is the selection brush tool and that one the shortcut is L. Okay so you press the letter L and it will show you that tool so you can see it is this one right here. It looks like a brush and then it has this little walking ants or the symbol of walking ants around it. So that is the tool right here. Okay now the cool thing about this tool is that it will help you work faster. Um, there are other tools that you can do the same thing and might even have a better result, but the advantage of this one is that you get to do things a lot faster. So once you have this tool selected, the only thing you have to do is go around, you know, the object or the hole in this case. And once you get to the end, you can see that it filled it in. So right now, all of that is, you know, um, basically selected and I can generate fill, which is one of the other tools that I wanted to talk about. Um, basically, it's an AI you know, supported tool where it basically reads your image and identifies what you probably want for this scenario, which is filling in this hole with some of the concrete. And it us utilizes AI by looking at this image and thinking, okay, all of this is filled, so you're selecting this, you probably don't want that there and you wanna fill it with something similar. Now, how this works, you can gen click on it and you don't have to write anything. If you want to remove something, just click generate and it will send that data up to the Adobe server. That way it will process it, the machine there, and then it brings down the data of what should be in there. Um, there is a limit of, you know, how many you can use where it goes faster. And after you use it a lot, it starts going really slow. As you can tell, I've used it a lot, so it goes a little bit slower. But it still did a great job. Look at how well that is filled. Even if you zoom in, you can see that it looks pretty realistic um, compared to the rest of the image. So that is one way. I'm going to go back because I want to show you one more time how that worked. I'm going to press the letter L in my keyboard. I'm going to select this. And then it did that. Now, even though um, this looks like that magenta fill, it is a selection. If I press the letter V for Victor, you can see that it changes to the walking ant. So you can use this tool for creating a selection. If I press the letter L, it goes back to that. So if I go like this and I want to select that, and then I go to the letter V, you can see that I added to it. Um, so it can become pretty powerful. Um, the more you use it, the more you get a hang of it. And you can see that you can do a couple of things. Now, once you have this as a selection, you can always modify with one of the other selection tools. You can add to it, you know, subtract it or anything like that. Um, so for example, I can now select it a different tool, um, the object selection tool, and I can add to it, okay? So, or I can take away if I press option and then go back and take away some of that selection. If I press the letter L again, you can see that stayed with whatever I added because it's in memory of what I'm doing as I go with that tool. So pretty cool. Um, I thought I would show you how to do that. Uh, I'm going to press the letter V so I can go to the selection and then command D to deselect it so I can get away from it. Uh, let's move this to the side. Now so that's one 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 image I wanted to show you is the selection brush tool. Um, Another one that I wanted to share with you, I'm not going to save this, I'm going to go back here, is how to select an object a quick way, right? We went over some of the tools to select objects. Those were the traditional ones for Photoshop, but they realized that a lot of people wanted to select objects and sometimes they wanted something quick, right? So they came up with this tool, the object selection tool, that you press the letter W for your keyboard, okay? Um, and you have to hold down if you don't see it, and it's right here, object selection tool. So once you have that tool, if you move over your image, you can see that right away, I'm not clicking, I just hover over it and it identifies, oh, do you wanna select the sky? And then you go to the object or the rock, and then it, you can see that that's 
uh, an object and it selects it. Now, well, it's not selecting it yet. It's just showing you, hey, do you want this? And if you want to approve it, you just click on it and it will select it for you. So if I go out of it, you can see I'm going to change the tool because I don't, if I keep it in that um, mode, it just keeps showing me other things. So that's why I select the letter V to get out of it because it's distracting. Um, and now I, you can tell that it has the rock selected, which is pretty cool. Now, there are many you know, ways and you can use this. One way, I'm just going to show you one because I want to do a quick demo, but you can interpret it, you know, like as any other selection tool. Once you have it selected, you can do anything. I'm just going to do a quick adjustment of making, let's say, the background a little bit darker. Oh, but we'll look at what's happening here. I'm darkening that, so I'm going to invert the mask. So I'm going to do Command-I. Now it's the background. So now if I go to the curve and I darken it, then it's the background. So let's say I want to darken the background so then the rock kind of stands out a little bit more. Um, so that's the selection that I really wanted, but it was easier to select the rock than selecting everything else. Because I don't know if you noticed when I had the tool, it identifies like the sky. Let me go back to the image, right? And then this is separated. And if you can tell, like it's a little bit soft on the bottom where the water is. So it's way easier if you select the rock and then do the mask so that way you can adjust the surrounding area but you have to invert it like I did so anyway that's a quick adjustment now you can take advantage of it the same thing will work let's say if you have a someone in a t-shirt that's red and you realize oh I wish it was a different color you can object select the t-shirt you know or select the person and then try to modify it with adjustment which is pretty cool so that is one way of using that one I just wanted to show you a quick easy way of selecting a rock not like the tedious one of using the pen, the pen tool, or you know any other tool that takes time. This is a lot easier. However, keep in mind that what I'm doing here is just basically altering the color. But if I zoom in and I have that selection, it might not do a great job. So you always have to go in and verify. You can see that I selected this rock in the background. Um, so you have to always go in and check. So it is fast, but it's not always 100% perfect. Sometimes it's like 98 or sometimes it is 80. So it depends on the image and what's on the background. Um, so just keep that in mind that even though it's automated, you still have to go in there and look at it. Okay, so let's try another image. Um, actually, we can stay on this one real quick. Ah, I closed it. Let's reopen it. I can show you also the remove tool, which um, I think we covered, but if not, this is a good moment to try it. If you press the letter J, um, there are a couple of tools that have this shortcut, okay? So you have to look for the one that has these little stars. That's a smart tool. And that's the one that I want to show because I wanted to show you some of the smart ones today on this video. So this one, it works in a similar way. So if I select, let's say this rock, will basically remove it. So you can see that it has even the same color. Let's just say that I want to get rid of some of these algae. I just paint over it like that. And then boom, gone. So it works pretty well. Like this one here, let's try, try how that looks. I'm going to do it a little bit bigger so it's faster, but let's see if it does a good job. Look at that. That was pretty quick. So again, that is the remove tool. Even though it's not a selection tool, I thought I would show it because it's a smart tool. Um, we're probably going to use it again later, but I wanted to show it because also it, even though it's a smart tool, it has that magenta color. And I want to make sure that you understand that there are a couple of tools that have that, um, like the selection brush tool that also has that magenta tone to it. And one of the things I want to point out, since we're at it, when you select the, um, that tool, you can also make some adjustments like the opacity of it. And you can select the size here and the hardness, similar to the brush. You know, I mentioned that before that every time you have a tool in the top, it will have a bar that has some options. So you should always look there and see what you can adjust. You know, you can have the hardness to zero and then it will be a little bit softer at the edges or have it at 100 percent hardness. And so that way it's really sharp at the edges like a brush. <clears throat> OK, so. That's that. Let me close this image. Don't save. And I want to show you in a different scenario one of the things that you might encounter. So let's say that you want to select this. I'm going to do 
um, the object selection tool and I'm gonna click on this object and so select it like that so right now I have it selected I'm gonna press command J so I can duplicate only what I had selected so it's right here on the top and then the background one I'm actually gonna fill it with white and the reason why I want to do that is that if the edges are really contrasty right and that's a most black and this object is not when you do the selection even though it did a great job selecting it um, you will see that line black because of the background right so in that case you probably want to contract your image or your selection sorry so that way you can take away some of that you know blackness or if it's a, the opposite if it's a white background usually it has a white line so um, you want to contract it and get rid of it I have other videos that explains that but I just want to point out that when you use a tool like this that doesn't mean that you just do it quickly and it's done there's some refinement that you have to do um, to make it look good and one of the ways that you do that I'm going to explain it quickly even though we're going to do another video once you have the selection you go to select modify so select modify and then you can look for contract okay and then you can put I'm going to exaggerate it so you can see it let's put 10 press OK I'm going to zoom in so you can see what happened so the selection was actually at the edges all the way over there and I don't know if you noticed but it went a little bit in basically it went 10 pixels in and the reason is so that way when I do the copy of command J it left all that black in that image so in theory it should be a little bit better now Oop, wrong color so you see now it doesn't have that black line here okay so anyway that's a quick way of fixing it if it does something like that to be able to get rid of that blackness around it all right so that's that image let's do one more let's see what else I have for you today um, oh yes let's do a couple of these um, let's start with this one I'm gonna um, no let's jump yeah let's do let's do this one right here yeah let's go in order all right so this one what I want to show you is a different technique which is called the quick mask um, for the quick mask you guys have done normal mask that is in an adjustment layer or you can you know add a mask to an object as well but the quick mask is for things that are a little bit quicker hence the name right a quick mask um, and it does a pretty good job and it's a little bit versatile in the way that you can use it so I'm going to show you some of the cool things that you can do with it well one cool thing and you can take it in and then use it in different scenarios because again once I show you one technique that technique could be used in multiple scenarios so the shortcut to go into the quick mask is you press Q in your keyboard okay once you press Q you will see that your layer is gonna turn red like this okay so let me show you zoomed in it looks red if you don't memorize the shortcut which is the Q I'm gonna press Q again you see that now it's not red there is an area here that you can access to turn it on and it's this little icon that looks like a little rectangle with dotted lines in a circle okay so you can either press here okay and you can see that it went to red okay and on press here as well so I like to use a shortcut Q and this makes sense quick mask um, and once you have that with the brush tool in the same way that you paint with mask I'm gonna do it a little bit quicker um, I'm gonna paint the water and then makes make it smaller because I want to change the color so it looks not that brownish because it doesn't look super appealing it doesn't make me want to jump in that water uh, even though I jumped on it uh, but I was looking at this picture and I was like, oh man it would be great if that water was a different color so people you know seems like it's more appealing to them now so I'm talking here I'm trying to go a little bit quicker let's make it bigger even though it might not be perfect but I don't want you guys to be waiting too long I just want you to get the idea of the tool let's make it bigger yeah all the stuff so now that's red I'm gonna paint this area as well why not to make it more legit um, and you can see that I left the tree branch out because I wanna not affect that area so it works in the same way as a mask if I paint with white I'm gonna invert it right I can invert it here 
on the side, right, by flipping the foreground and background color, or I can press X in my keyboard. If I paint with white, you see, it goes like that. If I flip it to black, I can repaint it. So same as a mask. It basically is a mask. The only thing that it looks different, but it's working the same way. Now, once I have that, now I can make it a selection. And to make it a selection, you press Q again. And then what you had, it made it into a selection. If I press Q, it goes back to the quick mask. If I press Q again, it converts it into a selection, whatever you have painted. So that's why it's a quick mask, because you don't have to make a mask and then paint it. And, you know, you can actually do it just on top of the layer itself. Now, in this case, it selected the opposite of what I wanted, right? So I have to invert it. I'm going to do Command Shift I. Now I have the water and I can go to my, let's see, hue and saturation maybe. And I'm going to change the hue and let's find a color, ooh, bluish like that. Lower the saturation, maybe make it a little bit darker. That looks a little bit better. So if I do the before and after, that was brown. Now it's a little bit blue. It looks a little bit fake, so I feel like I didn't quite got that color right. Maybe a little more greenish. Somewhere around there. So that was brown. There we go. And that's a little bit better. Um, so that is a cool way of using, you know, the quick mask. So that way when you get into your adjustment layer, it already has what you want it. Um, you don't have to like make the mask and paint on it and all that. You can use it to combine images and multiple uses for this same as the normal mask that you guys have done already. Um, but you just have to remember that to enter that mode is you press the letter Q and you will see the layer that you have selected turn red and that means that you're in a quick mask. If you're ever working and you realize that that happened because you hit it by accident, now you know how to get out of it. You just press Q and that's it. And if you have something um, painted, you know, you did something with your quick mask and you painted and let me do one sample real quick. Um, if I'm in quick mask and I have my brush and I paint it, right? Um, and you want to get rid of it. If you press Q again, it has a selection. You can just do Command D to deselect it. Okay, and then it will be gone. All right, so let's close that one and do one last one before you guys leave. I know you're ready to be done with this. Um, let's go here. And I want to do one where I show you another tool real quick. That is also uh, another smart tool. Um, and that one is if you press the W. Oh, not the W. If you go to the W, you go here and you will see that because I had the object selection tool, which is W, all the ones that are inside of this are also W. So it is W, but what I meant is like not W, not the one that I wanted because I had object selection tool. But in here, you have quick selection tool as well. So you have three and you can see that the W is at the end for the three of them. So you go to that one, and I want to show you a quick way of making a selection also. You kind of go like this. Oh, I'm in the wrong layer. I forgot that I have put this image here because I want it to have that water behind the hole. So I was in the wrong layer. So let's go to the background. And one of the ways that this tool is really useful is that if you click and drag, you don't want to touch the area of the concrete because if not, it will select it. So I'm just in the dirt and I'm dragging it along and it just jumps and selects. Oh, you want this? And then boom, selects that. So I'm going to select all this area and I'm going to select the crowbar there. So that looks, you know, good enough for me because this is a demo. Um, once you have that, if I add a mask, it's going to do the opposite of what I want, but doesn't matter. I'm going to do command I and now I can move this one underneath and turn it on. And then I have the water underneath the hole. Uh, which it looks a little bit surreal. So again, this is another tool that is a smart tool. The shortcut for it is the same as the object selection tool. So it's W. But if you had the other one, you have to make sure you go in there and look for the quick selection tool, um, which is pretty cool. You just click and drag it. Um, I'm on the wrong layer again. You click and drag it and it will select, you see, pretty quickly. Look at that. It's like pretty smart. Uh, but again, like any of these other smart tools, you have to always go in and look at what it did to make sure it looks good. All right, so that's that one. Let me see if I forgot one more thing. Um, 
I wanted to talk about the sky, the object selection tool, but um, I'll do this quick one. If you go to select, you can go to sky. So on the top of the screen, select, and then you navigate to sky. And basically this is a smart, another smart selection tool. It will just select the sky for you, okay? And then you can do a mask, you can darken it, you can do whatever you want. In a similar way as any of the other selections, you might, <clears throat> sorry, you might want to add a feather or you might want to, you know, do some things to the selection, contract it or anything like that to improve your selection, okay? But this is another um, smart tool that you can go to, select, and then go to sky, or you can go subject. If you have a person um, standing in an image, you can just select the subject and we'll actually select it for you which is pretty cool. But and again, you always have to look at it and make sure that it did a good job. So that is for the smart tools for now. Later on, we'll go more into depth. Um, but I wanted to show you because we talked about selections this week and I thought I will go in a separate video about the smart ones um, now that you know how to use the normal selection tools. All right, hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you so much.